Welcome to the SQL Server Fast Execution Plan video training, presented by Hugo Cornelis. Where later blocks of this course are focused on specific activities within execution plans, block 1 presents generic information about them. And the basic level, of course, starts with the basics. The first chapter explains the basics of what execution plans are and why they are relevant when you try to troubleshoot a slow running query. Instead of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, execution plans allow you to pinpoint the exact cause of the bad performance, which means you can target specifically that root cause. The second chapter explains how to obtain the three types of execution plan. Execution plan only, also known as estimated plan. Execution plan with runtime statistics, also known as actual plan. And the live execution plan. We'll also talk about the pros and cons of each of these three types. In chapter 3 we explain the basics of how to read an execution plan. We cover the main elements of execution plans, the operators and the data flows. We also cover how these two elements interact with each other as an execution plan is running. We then use that knowledge to explain why execution plans should not be read right to left, nor left to right, but each and every way. The chapter ends by addressing a few common misconceptions. Chapter 4 introduces you to properties. They are not directly visible in the graphical representation of execution plans, but they can be easily accessed. And you should access them, because the properties provide a wealth of information. There are three broad categories of properties. Those that control details of how an operator behaves, those that provide information about the compilation process, and those that show runtime counters after a query has completed. Chapter 5 focuses on where you can find execution plans. We already showed how to request execution plans for a query you are working on in Chapter 2, but here we show that there are many more ways to get execution plans. For instance, when analyzing current activity on a production server, or for looking at the execution plan after the query has already executed, without having to execute it again. A lot of performance issues that can be found with execution plans are related to bad cardinality estimates. The optimizer expects that a certain number of rows will match the query criteria and base its decisions on that assumption. If those estimated numbers are totally different from the actuals, then the optimizer likely made bad decisions. That's why Chapter 6 provides extensive coverage of the perhaps most important properties you can find in execution plans, the estimated and actual number of rows. We talk about their importance, but also about the many cases where the numbers may be presented in potentially confusing ways. The final chapter talks about perhaps the most common misperception when working with execution plans. One that throws off not only beginners, but also hardened professionals. The percentages displayed as query cost relative to the batch, and as operator cost relative to a query. These numbers can be very useful, if you know what they represent. And more important, know what they don't represent. Using these without understanding what they actually mean is very dangerous because it can seriously mislead you and cause you to waste your time and energy on the wrong parts of an execution plan. These seven chapters have a combined playing time of almost two and a half hours. And best of all, they can be viewed by anyone, as often as you want, for absolutely free. No strings attached, no purchase required, you don't even have to provide an email address. So if you want to learn about execution plans, or you already have some knowledge but want to know more, then there is no better place to start than the basic level of block one of the SQL Server Fast Execution Plan video training.